Okay, hey, hi, 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 math people. Uh, I have a special occasion for you today. It is one of the proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so, there are many different proofs of this idea. Um, the most common one, I'm going to display an image right now. So, this approach uses the area of a square and sets it equal to the area of all the uh, triangles and then the single square within the square um, to prove the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Uh, you know, I'm not going to explore that one for you today. I'm going to explore a different one. Uh, one founded by our good man Garfield. Uh, not the orange cat, but the president of uh, the United States of America. He was the 20th president, and uh, a few years before he came into office for his uh, very short time in office, unfortunately, uh, he uh, proved the Pythagorean theorem in a very creative way using trapezoids, or trapezoid singular. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, uh, so it's just worth mentioning uh, as a interesting note that uh, Garfield was um, assassinated uh, and he also studied geometry. Uh, there was also another president that was assassinated who studied geometry as well and that would be uh, your man Abraham Lincoln. So unfortunately there's a bit of a trend with studying geometry and getting assassinated as president. Uh, just worth mentioning that uh, for any of you uh, future presidents out there, maybe geometry is not your course. Um, so let's jump into it uh, by looking at a few of the prereq skills, what we need to know in order to uh, prove the Pythagorean theorem using Garfield's approach. All right, so uh, two areas that will be critical for this proof. First one, area of a triangle, one half base times height. Yeah, so if you notice I've drawn a right triangle, uh, that's very intentional. You don't have to have a right triangle for this area, um, but the proof specifically calls for right triangles, so that's the reason why I've drawn that. Uh, second area, area of a trapezoid. Um, note, I've drawn in uh, what appears to be an isosceles trapezoid. Really the only uh, main prereq is that you have two uh, or one pair of opposite sides uh, that are parallel to one another. Uh, and uh, so it doesn't have to appear to be isosceles. You'll notice that the proof uh, the trapezoid certainly isn't. Uh, and that area is one half, and then the quantity of the sum of the two bases. So the bases being uh, those two parallel sides, and then multiplied by the height. All right, so we're going to be using these two areas, these two equations, to prove the Pythagorean theorem. Let's actually talk about what the Pythagorean theorem is, though, in the next little segment. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem simply and so elegantly states that the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the two other sides, otherwise known as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's jump right into it. Okay, and then there you have it. There's the proof. All done. Just kidding. Uh, let's actually talk about it uh, piece by piece. Uh, but in order for me to do that, I need to pick you up. Uh, the, the camera, that is, not, not, not you physically. Um, so I'm going to do that. Just allow me to readjust, and we'll break it down, starting with uh, our trapezoid. All right. OK, hello. I had to be a little creative here with how I wanted to represent this. So I'm going to act as this uh, floating mass, uh, mystical uh, circle here. Hello. Hi. All right, so let's talk about this figure here first, because this figure is the key to our proof. So this figure, actually a trapezoid, a little hard to see, but it is. Um, so uh, I can kind of explain why it's a trapezoid. It's quadrilateral with four sides, and one pair of opposite sides that are actually parallel. So really, let's talk about this composition of this trapezoid. This trapezoid is really just three right triangles, where um, two of them are the same. So if you take a look at this kind of base triangle going on here, uh, if you uh, observe the side lengths, I have a side length of A, side length of B, and then an hypotenuse of C. Same thing going on up here. Actually, if I, if I stack this triangle, this triangle 1, kind of awkwardly on top of triangle 2, both of these triangles are the same thing in blue. And I create this strange looking uh, third triangle off to the right here. Um, I call it triangle 3. If I extend this green line down to actually create that trapezoid, a few important aspects of this uh, trapezoid: um, 
I went ahead and labeled them one, two, and three, the three triangles that make up this trapezoid. And uh, lastly, uh, if you can see here, triangle three is actually also a right triangle. Um, through this awkward orientation, that angle right there uh, is actually right. Okay, so let's talk about the proof in the three parts that I've uh, kind of adjusted it into. So part one, let's find the area of this trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is one half times the quantity of B1 plus B2 times the height. Two bases here, and really just A and B. Base one, base two. So I'm gonna sub them in. The height, using the segment addition, uh, addition postulate, is really just A plus B. So for the height, I'm just gonna plug in A plus B. As you can see here in blue for my part one, I've just subbed in the values. I can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation uh, to um, kind of simplify this uh, idea, this one half times the quantity of A plus B times the quantity of A plus B, to just rewrite it as one half um, times the quantity of A plus B squared. Part two, so again, part one, uh, what I've done is I've actually just found the area of the trapezoid. Part two, I'm actually going to find the area of all three of the small triangles. Now, there's a very intuitive line of thought here. If I find the area of all three triangles and I add them up, that's actually the area of the trapezoid. So I'm actually going to find the area of the trapezoid using the sum of the three triangles. So uh, two of the triangles are the same, triangle one and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, well, hey, the base here is, is A, um, the height here is B. I'm just going to sub in an A for the base and a B for the height for both of those triangles, uh, one and two. Done. Triangle three is a little bit trickier. Take a look at that triangle. Uh, it's got a height of C and a base of C. So I'm actually going to plug in C for both. Now I'm going to add them all up. That last line in part two, it's the sum of all three of the triangles, aka actually the area of the trapezoid. I can rewrite that as AB plus one half C squared doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation. I've combined like terms, and I also noted that c times c is just c squared. Okay, gotta catch my break, uh, breath here. Uh, a lot of heavy math, as you can see. Uh, in our last part, part three, I have two representations of the area of this trapezoid. Let's set both representations equal to one another. So in this uh, first line of part three, I have set both the areas equal to one another. Now, through a little bit of algebraic manipulation, I can get the Pythagorean theorem. What I'm about to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 as my first step. Get rid of those pesky 1 halves. Nobody likes fractions anyway. After we do that, I'm going to expand the left side. A plus B squared. I don't like it. Let's expand it. Very last step, I notice that both sides have a 2AB. Let's just subtract it off from both sides. Get rid of them to result in the most beautiful, apparently geometry's most elegant theorem, according to some textbooks, the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. All right, so there you have it. Wasn't that great? Uh, I know a lot to take in if it's the first time you've seen it. Um, I do recommend you look at other uh, proofs. Um, so Garfield, uh, of course, wasn't the only one to prove this idea. Um, it's fun to explore other proofs, and it also is um, really an excellent outlet to explore the mathematical realm uh, that is proving theorems and kind of taking what we know about certain shapes and working off that uh, to make kind of bigger and bolder claims. Um, so with that said, I'm going to continue to math on and I hope that you do the same. Maybe take a look at some other Pythagorean theorem proofs, um, you know, in your spare time because that's what normal people do in their spare time, according to me at least.